Hello fellow floss tubers. This is Lynn Wilches, also known as Love to Cross Stitch. It has been almost a year, actually. Um, I think I'm coming up a month shy of a year since I've been on here. Um, we have all gotten a little older, <laughs> and but I am still busy. I am still working on stuff. Um, if you're one of those people that blog, like to look at blogs and stuff, I post every day the stuff that I'm working on. Um, and you will find out that most of my stuff for a while has been Quilts of Valor um, at our fair, Southwest Washington Fair this year. We wound up with over a hundred requests for veterans to receive their, um, to receive a quilt. So, we have been busy. I have done over 20 tops this year, and I'm still doing a few more. So, I keep busy, um, but I haven't been doing a lot. And since this is floss tube, I am going to do floss projects, but not all of them are cross stitch. I, I still have the one process of my Santa Claus. So uh, I will show you that. It's not very far along. I haven't worked on it for probably about six months. So hold on. It fell down. <laughs> okay. So since the last time you saw this, I was working on a quarter, the bottom quarter of this piece. I have since moved over to the second quarter. So I'm working on trying to get a half of it done. So probably about a third or whatever. So this is where I'm at. It's really cool. <laughs> I love this piece. I just haven't worked on it for a while. Um, it's not that I don't want to. It's just that there were other things that I wanted to work on. And I tend to be, like I said before, I'm a dog that is chasing a squirrel. Oh, <gasps> there's a squirrel. Oh, yeah, there goes another one. So it's like project number one's over here. Project number two's over. Oh, and then there's another one over there. So, yes, that's me. Um, and in the process, I finish things that I haven't finished in a long time, but I do finish them. Uh, and one of the projects, I don't know if you remember last year, I was trying to do some ornaments. And I only got one ornament done, which if you saw my blog, you could tell. And then Christmas came and went, and I still hadn't finished my second ornament because I want to have at least two ornaments a year. Um, I normally give one to my son, and I keep the other one for myself. My daughter doesn't want them because she doesn't have any place to put them. So I figure when the time comes, she's got all my ornaments that I've done that she can pick from. So this particular ornament um, has been a little special because um, I will show you. See, I've got all of this and these little beads right here, okay? They are pearls. I don't know if they're real or not. And knowing my family, they could be real. Um, they were part of a necklace that was either my mother's or my grandmother's. I believe they were my grandmother's because my mother hasn't given me any of her pearls. So um, the necklace was broke. I have two of them. One is still together and one was broken. That one was broken. So I took it apart and I used them as dangles right there. Okay. I did that on both of that ornament. They turned out really good. I think I used them all up. And now I can say that my grandmother is part of that ornament. Okay. So that's, that's the cool part about that one. And then um, I finished, and I don't know if I was working on it when I was doing my other um, 
when I did my other blog. But anyway, completed. All done. Isn't that cool? All beads. I decided, oh, and I showed you the wrong side. I decided to do a sleeve on here, but I didn't want to do it all in black because I, I kind of wanted to be able to decide that if, let's say, this side gets all messed up, I can flip it over. Nobody's the wiser unless you look close and on the here you can see it. But, so there's my finished project. My husband hung it on the wall the day after, uh, the day that I finished it. I was really surprised. I did have, um, I did have a funny part happen when I was doing the sleeve. I was stitching it with the first 20 rows. Okay, so I was stitching it. And I actually had it attached on here. So, um, as I was doing this, excuse me, my computer says that <laughs> it's running out of battery, but oh well. So, anyway, I was stitching this, and halfway through, for some reason, I reversed the pattern. Because I was thinking I had to reverse the pattern in order to get it to line up with this. So when I was stitching from from here up, okay, I actually attached it and I was stitching my way up and I was doing it backwards, which don't ever do. It's kind of confusing. I got half of this was flipped like I reversed it. So apparently I was doing it one way for quite a while and then I started doing it the other way on the rows. So I had to unzip half of that, turn the one around, and zip it back together or stitch it back together. And then I could stitch all of this on here. I decided for the top part, I did one row of black. So you can tell that's the top. I don't know why I did that, but I did. So I think it was that I had one more row to go and I thought, I'm not doing this. I'll just do a black row and because they weren't. The keys weren't lining up like they do in a zipper. So, anyway. Okay. So, those have been my projects with the beading. And I do... Oh. And so, now I'm starting on this year's ornament. Here's one. I'm going to have to take it apart right in this area. So, I'll unzip it. I'll figure out where I mucked up. And then I'll zip it back together. This one turned out pretty good. So there are going to be two of these for the ornament. That's going to be an ornament. Um, I have got four of these done. I need to do more. And actually, I'm probably going to do that today. Um, I was working on my class project, and I'll tell you all about that too. So... Not only do I do Quilts of Valor, which I'm the leader of Veterans Memorial Museum Quilts of Valor, which you can catch our Facebook page exactly as I said it, Veterans Memorial Museum Quilts of Valor. We have a Facebook page, which I do. Um, okay, so I do that. And then, what's the other thing? <laughs> so then I'm in Brazilian embroidery, and now they've got me on the board for marketing. So... I am trying to find a way to get more younger people interested in Brazilian embroidery. Brazilian embroidery is floss, okay? It's it's rayon threads. It's dimensional. Okay, so the one thing about Brazilian embroidery is it's a combination of cruel work, crochet work, um, dimensional work, traditional embroidery. Every kind of embroidery that is out there is what brings Brazilian embroidery together. So it's not a one type embroidery. It's not all satin stitch. It's not all dimensional. 
it's a variety of different stitches. You can do Brazilian embroidery in other flosses such as DMC, Anchor, etc. But you're not going to get the shine and you're not going to get the ooh wow factor. Okay. So Brazilian embroidery to me, I think if my grandmother had known about it or worked on it, she would have fell in love with it because my grandmother did beautiful embroidery work. That being said, I have completed the project I started uh, last year that I start I was showing as I was going. Okay, so that one I did finish and I have it right here as soon as I can find it. That's that one. That's that one. That's that one. I had it here just a minute ago. So I had to redo my video because when I tried it on another program, my sound and what I was doing were off and that drives me batty. So anyway, so, okay. So here's the piece that I worked on. Okay. All right. That's the piece that I was working on and I finished it and I actually finished it about a month ago, maybe two months ago. Okay. Then a friend of ours that, um, one of our group members, um, was working on this one that I thought was simply gorgeous and I had to do it. So this is the pattern. Okay. And it's called, um, delicate treasures. Okay. This is an, uh, intermediate type thing to do but when you get into Brazilian embroidery this is one to learn from and it's really fun and I enjoyed every minute of it the only thing I didn't care for was one of the flowers colors but um, other than that so here it is finished and you can see it's three-dimensional okay um this flower right here, I'm not real happy with it because it's so big. And then I made the others a little bit smaller to where they look a little bit better. Um, this color was not my favorite. Even though I love uh, purple, it that purple, gray, and pink just didn't turn me on. But I did it. So that I actually finished last week. Okay, so I finished this last week. And I have been taking classes, virtual classes, because with Brazilian embroidery, we have a seminar once a year. And then we have started, because when COVID hit, we had to do the seminar kind of virtual. So the teachers were doing virtual classes. They found that they enjoyed it and a way to keep our group... Uh, Brazilian Dimensional Embroidery International Group organization. We're a 501c. Uh, in order to keep members interested and that we have new things and we, we try to work every way we can to, to keep bringing in new people, um, they started doing virtual classes. So seminar this year did happen, but only about 35 people showed up and it was at Pacific Lutheran Church. Uh, no, Pacific Lutheran University. It's up in Tacoma, Tacoma, Washington. So I didn't attend because there wasn't classes that kind of interested me. I want, when I take a class, I look at, what am I going to learn from it? Is it something I like? Is it something that I'm going to use? Is it something that I can, that a friend of mine may like? Whatever. So I look at it all different angles. And one of the things, see, I'm getting gray. Um, so one of the things is that I want to learn. So each class I take, I want to be able to come out of a classroom and learn at least one thing. 
if I've learned one thing out of that class, it's awesome. That's a class I want to take. So they have two different, um, they split the virtual classes half a year. Okay. So in June, I signed up for three classes. One was teaching. Okay. That class is done. That was a fun class. I learned a lot. This class that I'm taking is, um, the T Bonsai by Debbie Goff. So even though this picture doesn't give it justice, okay, I'm learning. And I'll tell you what, I'm having a heck of a good time. This teacher is a teacher well worth taking. And it's kind of funny because I'm the only one that signed up for the class. So I get a one-on-one -on -one session with her. She doesn't care if one person or two people or 20 people sign up for a class. She's willing to teach the class. And that's what I love about her. So our first lesson was learning how to do the tree. Okay. The tree. I finished the tree last night. Okay. So there's the tree. Now, I did find that I have to fill in a couple spots because I can see it today. Then, last on Friday, we learned how to do this piece, this piece, and this piece. So, which I'm working on. That is this right here. Okay. Then I'm going to do the, the moss in this area, okay? It's fun. I don't think, I don't think I've had this much fun in a long time by taking a class. Usually there's a whole bunch of people and then I get frustrated with other people because they're either further ahead or further behind. But since this is a one-on-one, -on -one, I am having a blast. So that's what I've been doing for the last two weeks and I want to keep up with her because I want to get this done and if I get this done I may be giving this out for a Christmas present fingers crossed so those are some of the Brazilian embroidery stuff that I do oh and then I got this pattern okay it's um my Brazilian fancy and it's by Rosalie Wakefield. Rosalie Wakefield is very popular. She's one of the original Brazilian embroidery members. And she has tons of patterns. There are patterns out there that I haven't even seen because I haven't been a member for only about five years. So, um... And every time a new one pops up, I'm thinking, oh, that is cool. And then I'll find out that she did that way back when. Like this one, this is a 2017 pattern. So they want me to have this done by December 1st so that they can get it done for their um, raffle quilt. So I started it. The thing with that is that um, I didn't have all the floss, so I'm waiting for the floss, and they did send me that red, so I got started on that red. It's going to bleed, but I'm sure they can handle it, because we all know how to take care of the bleeding on, on red dyes. Then I found a couple patterns from Debbie Kelly, who does Brazilian embroidery as well, and she does the rose patterns. And one of the rose patterns you've seen me do. So this is another one of hers. This is her book. This book is awesome. And it shows, <clears throat> excuse me, it shows how to do it step by step. This is one of the rose patterns. It's not in color. But I believe that's the one on the front page. Okay. So I'm going to do that one. And then this book has got all the techniques you need to know. The different things that she's got going, how to do the, the rows, etc. 
So I have another rose pattern that she did. I sent the fabric. I sent, um, what do you call it? The marble cotton fabric. I'm a quilter. I should know it. So anyway, I sent her two pieces. She printed the pattern on both sides. So she printed one pattern on one side, one pattern on the other, so that I could decide which one I want to do. I thought that was so awesome. So anyway, I'm going to work on that. Now let's get on to the next class. I have another class that I'm going to take with Debbie Goff because I was I wanted to take Debbie Kelly's class and I can't remember what that was, but I'm going to be on a cruise at that time, so couldn't do it. This class of Debbie Kelly's I'm going to take in November. And I'm looking forward to it. Plus, I'm going to help her out with the class. So, it's so five alive. So you get this. Get a load of the colors. Okay. So I've got all my kit. And what I do is I make sure that I have everything I need. And it's telling me I'm missing a color. And when I ordered from her, I forgot to order it. So anyway. So I've got that. I'm set. I'm ready to go. Um, Brazilian embroidery right now, because I'm taking the classes, has kind of perked me up a little bit more, and I'm working on them a little bit harder, and I want to get them done. So I am tickled to death with that. So even though I have my cross stitch, and I have my quilts of valor, and I have Brazilian embroidery, and I have my beading, I'm still keeping busy. I'm getting things done slowly but surely. I try not to have more than one project going with Brazilian embroidery, but unfortunately, oh, I didn't show the other one I have. I have like three projects going right now with Brazilian embroidery. It's almost like what I did with um, quilting. And like I said, I have 15 or more unfinished projects with quilting and I haven't quite got back to it. I do my quilts of valor quilts, but I haven't done my own stuff in a long time. So these are the things that I work on. These are the things that I'm enjoying right now. This is where life is taking me right now. Um, my husband is going through immunotherapy. So even though they took care of his kidney cancer last year about this time. And that's part of the reason why you haven't seen me in a year. Uh, we found out that he had a small mass on his liver. So they waited till February, January, February, before they started immunotherapy. He got a port put in so that they could do that. Um, the mass wasn't that big. But it's there, and it was cancerous, so they had to go in and do something. So they did immunotherapy. He's been doing immunotherapy once a, once a month now, and it's working. It seems to be helping, and I think if anybody you know has cancer, tell them to do immunotherapy and to do that first, because they told us that if he would do radiation or chemo, he wouldn't be able to go back to, he couldn't go, he couldn't have immunization. But if he does the immunotherapy first, and then they decide that that's not working and they go into radiation or um, chemotherapy, he can technically do that. But you can't do it with radiation. And so anyway, it's kind of confusing, but. The way to go is the immunotherapy, even though it gives you a dry mouth, poor guy, dry mouth. Um, it might mess with your thyroid. You know, I have thyroid issues. I take a pill. Big whoop. Um, there are things that are uncomfortable that you have to work it out. Unfortunately, everything they give us, there's a side effect. So it's kind of frustrating because why should you take something when you have to have one, two, three, ten side effects? But 
then you're looking at when it comes to cancer you know you take what you can get and you try to make it the best you can so he's doing really good he's golfing he golfs twice a week he bowls twice a week i only bowl once a week now so like us all we're getting old see look at that getting gray hair um it's another year gone by and i hope that i can have more updated stuff going on i hope you will join us either with brazilian embroidery cross stitch or beading i love to bead if you have any questions on beading if you want me to show you anything with beading now that i know how to do it i will do it i will show you how to do it um Somebody was talking about big projects with beading. So I'll give you this tip. When I work on my beading, okay, and it gets longer and longer, so what I do is I roll, because beads can roll. And I roll my projects, and I even store them rolled sometimes. A lot of times, though, you want to keep them flat because it's glass beads, and if you're not careful, they will break. So when I'm working on a project, I will roll it just like that. And I will stitch along here. It's that easy. So the bigger the project, the more you roll. And, you know, it's easy to carry. <laughs> so anyway, but that's what it looks like. And that's how it works. And my husband has already hung it up and I took it off the wall. So I got to get it back up on the wall. You'll probably notice. So anyway, I hope you all have a great day. And look at life as um, you take each day. There's always somebody that's in worse shape than you are. So just kind of, I don't know, take a positive attitude. I have done that all the way through this cancer stuff. There's a positive to it. I'm going to have him that much longer. Um, life is awesome. You know, I mean, we have to do each day as we go. And we're going on a cruise. So it can't be that bad. So just open your eyes, look around, and be thankful for what you have today. So, um... That being said, may you have a great and awesome day, and I hope to see you soon. Take care.